What about the sororities? What does that even mean? Ooh, how many other queer girls are there? Not sure. Really? Clink Clink was a little brain spark that happened over the course of, you know, a couple of years. And I've had many, many friendships um, with other queer people and it's just, it came to my attention that this complex view of friendship and love and how to navigate all of that is really different in the queer community than it is elsewhere. So I wanted to tell this story about friendship and how friendship shifts to crushes and shifts to love and maybe lust and then back to friendship and just kind of navigating that journey. They came to me with Clink Clink and said, I have this idea for a show. It's about two girls in one of the girls' bedrooms jumping forward every four years, starting at when they're seven years old, ending when they're 35 years old. And it shows their friendship and their relationship. Uh, Izzy knew every single beat of the story, what happened at age seven, their first tea party. At age 11, uh, their first talking about having crushes on boys and girls. Age 15, the first time they, they danced together. <laughs> We all went to DU together, um, and we were all in the theater department together. And Kevin and I, well, all three of us really, but um, Kevin and I have worked together creatively, like all through college. We just are like kind of a match made in heaven when it comes to playwriting and directing. Izzy is one of like the most talented actors I've ever met. So, and also my best friend, I lived with them in college. It just kind of like came, all came together with the three of us. There, and have you guys bring it on. In 2021, we were all theater majors and uh, the post-COVID theater scene sucked. So we sat on my living room floor and ordered Thai food and talked about how much we all loved theater and how much we all wanted to do theater and let's make it official, let's, let's have a whole theater company. Do you want to help me take my Nintendo dogs for a walk? Don't you have a real dog you should be walking? Yeah, but he's not as cute as Sylvester. The fact that this is just a passion project for some college grads, it was hard to find a space where we could really get that production value. And really it's the partnership with the People's Building where we're having our 24, 2024 season as the resident theater company. That's the biggest evolution. Far across the we're able to share these stories with more people than we have been in the past, um, which is terrifying but it is also so beautiful and we are, we are very, very lucky to be given the opportunity to do so. You know, nothing happens without a group. It's not the three of us, it is like everyone who has, we couldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the People's Building and you know, countless other people that have, which is what's so cool, you know, like finding people to rally around something and yeah, work together on it. There is nothing painful about this show that is rooted in queerness that is not painful for anyone else, right? There's, there's pain, there's heartbreak, it, it, gets, it gets sad, but it's also happy and light and beautiful, but all of those feelings are felt universally. You are just seeing them through the lens of two women. And you know, as, as a theater company, we're, we're trying to tell stories like that. We're trying to tell stories that, that are gentle, that are kind, that are about love and growth and, and and pain, but, but not because that you're queer, just because you're human, which is something that we don't see in a lot of queer stories. We see queer people feeling pain and heartbreak because of their queerness, but not just because of their humanness, which is kind of where all of that comes together.